Hi, I'm Sharon, and this is episode 332 of the Knit Style Podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 332. Yeah, I want to welcome new viewers. I've had some new viewers because of my last video <laughs> and the title. Um, speaking of my last video, thank you all. So I talked about a recent health issue that I've been having, and I explained it in depth on Instagram. And if you want to see that explanation, um, you can find an abbreviated version of it under my highlights on Instagram. And thank you all if you've subbed to me over on Instagram as well. I do very much appreciate it. So I've had a really good couple of weeks. My son and I went to Disney World last week, and I was really nervous about it because I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to handle it with my health issues. Um, but luckily, this is a silver lining, a small silver lining, I was able to get um, a disability access card because I have a hidden disability. <laughs> I would have never thought that would have ever happened to me, but it did. And we got this disability access pass and it shows up right in your Disney app, Disney My Experience app. And you are able to um, book attractions and rides one at a time. And it allows you, you still have to wait for attractions. However, you don't have to wait in the physical line. And that is absolutely perfect for people like me who, for example, I need to eat on a regular basis. I need need to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks on a very timed basis. So waiting in line it would be difficult because some of those lines get to be over an hour. So um, yeah, I got this pass and my son went on everything. Every big ride. I mean, there was a couple, and like we didn't go on Dumbo. <laughs> and I went on a lot of rides. Um, I'm finding roller coasters make me a little, not sick, but I get a little lightheaded at this point because lightheadedness was part of my issue. I thought I would try a roller coaster. I tried Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and it was a little, the turns bothered me. So the fast rides, if it's not too turny, didn't bother me. It's just a turny, twisty ride kind of bothers me a little. Um, I went on Tron which is really fast. And it was fine. I loved Tron. It actually made me feel better when I got off it. I don't know what it did. The G-Force or something. I don't know. But it was a lot of fun. And we had a blast. We went to Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. And I was able to use my pass at that party. And we were able to... St we did so much. We saw... We did the fireworks at the party. We did the... We saw the parade at the party. Um... We went to all four parks, four days, four parks, walked a lot. Luckily, I got my energy back. My energy's been fine. I feel great. I feel like my old self again, which is awesome. I walked 44 miles. <laughs> I had to eat a lot to keep up my energy, but it was fine. Um, we ate at great places. We had stunning weather. We were so lucky because the minute we left... You know, Florida's iffy, especially this that time of year. Like, it's still hurricane season. There's a lot of rain. But we had beautiful weather. Hardly any rain. Like, spritzes. That was it. And it was amazing. We even played mini golf. That's crazy. <laughs> but it was really fun. So, um, Rich and I are going back. We're going in December, the first week of December. And I'm really excited about it. We're going to have a ball. I'm very, I'm, I'm really excited about our trip. So, yeah, let's start the show. I have a lot to show you. I did some yarn dyeing this week after I got home, after I rested. Because <laughs> I was really, really tired. 
But I did. I did some yarn dyeing, which was really fun. First thing I have to show you is a beautiful yarn bag combination. Look at this bag, you guys. This is so pretty. I'm calling this Crafty Birds. The detail on this bag is incredible. I mean, there's, it's not, it's more um, geared towards sewists and cross stitchers. But, I mean, needle and thread, you yeah. know, it's really cute. Love is the needle that knows how to mend. I mean, it's so much detail in this bag, so many pretty birds. And the yarn that I did is so pretty. I didn't pull out the blue or the green. I just pulled out the warm red and the gold. And I'm really happy with how it came out. It has very light speckle. And I love it. It's, such, it's really, really pretty. If you're a bird lover or like to sew or cross stitch, and look at the inside. It has coordinating fabric. Such a pretty set. So I'm calling this Crafty Birds because aren't we all Crafty Birds? <laughs> So yeah, that was a fun one to do. And if you want just the bag, you can go to Donna Donna's shop, Donna's Design Shop on Etsy. I have it linked down below. I have it linked in the listing. And you can find everything. You can find the bag there and other bags. She has a lot of really beautiful bags. So check it out. Okay. So I sold out of all my fall line last time I recorded. So I dyed some more. So I have slutty squash, which is such a beautiful, warm brown orange tone. So if you want to learn more about warm and cool colors in your crafting. Sherry, formerly of the Loopy U, Sherry sold the Loopy U and um, started a business for cross stitchers called Colorado Cross Stitcher. And she has a podcast called Colorado Cross Stitcher. And in her latest episode, she did a wonderful essay, video essay about warm colors versus cool colors. And even as a dyer, I found it fascinating. So, um, I mean, I know about warm colors and cool colors. Sometimes I have trouble recognizing them, but all the colors I'm showing you today are warm. But in this bag, here's an example of mixing. Mixing warm colors and cool colors is really fun. So, if you see this bag has a lot of warm reds, this is a very warm red. It's not orange, but it's got like yellow in it, so it's more on the orange side. Um, and this has the golds, which is a cool, a warm, is a warm color. But then you have these bright blue birds, and those birds are a cool color. So Teresa Kogut, the designer of this fabric, threw in. Um, that cool blue, just as interest and a pop. Look at this bird, he's carrying DMC. How cool is he? Anyway, so that was interesting. So mo all of my yarns this week are, are warm, except for the black, which I'm gonna show you right now, which is a cool black. So I have Familiar, which is a cool color. A very cool black. And 
this one, I call this one hot. <laughs> this is Slutty Pumpkin. I love it. This is one of my most popular colors that I've ever done. And you guys tell me, is I would say that this is more on the cool side. The beautiful Luxardo, named for Luxardo cherries, and the drinks that Rich and I can no longer drink because we're not drinking. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a beautiful color. Is this warm or cool? I think it's more on the cool side. But you tell me what you think. So I have this, I'm going to pair this with, I'm knitting a sample for the shop and this is, um, it's a blanket. It's a circular blanket by Curious Handmade Habitation. I'm not sure. It's one of her blankets. Um, it's got a black slutty squash and this beautiful Luxardo. This is the next color. I can't wait to start that Luxardo. I'm hoping to get to that this week. I'm doing a lot of knitting. Um, I want to finish up some things for the fall, so yeah. All right, and I also have a new color, semi solid. This one is kind of like Slutty Pumpkin, but it's deeper and richer. Look at this one. I'm calling this one. Rhinebeck Riches, because it's such a rich color. I am going to Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck is this Saturday, October 21st, 2023. And my friend Susan and I are going, and I'm very excited about it. So this is Slutty Pumpkin. Oh yeah, much brighter. And this is Rhinebeck Riches. They are similar. This is deeper and richer. This is brighter. Both a warm color. So I love, 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 love Rhinebeck Riches, my newest in my fall tonal collection. So if you put them all together, my fall tonals, I have slutty squash. I'll show them. I'll compare. This camera's picking it up. Slutty pumpkin. Rhinebeck riches. Ooh, those look cool. Familiar. And Luxardo. This is. My typical fall collection and my new one is Rhinebeck Riches. So if you see me at Rhinebeck, say hello for sure. I am not planning on going to the podcaster meetup. Um, I generally I generally have gone in the past, but I I don't know, I'll see. I'll see how much time I have. But I, I'm not planning on going. So if you see me, you're more likely to see me wandering <laughs> the halls of Rhinebeck. This is my Rhinebeck sweater. I love it. I'm very, very pleased with it. This is Arbor Vitae by Hohi Locatelli. And it was in Pom Pom. I don't remember the year. Oh, 2019 probably, because I, I started this in 2019. I just blocked it. What? <laughs> Four years in the making. So here is Arbor Vitae. I love it. Um, this is an, the yarn is not mine. This is an old, um, purchase, I think I purchased it in 2018, um, from Primrose when she still dyed Superwash, which I don't think she does anymore, but anyway, 
uh, she doesn't speckle dye anymore so this is one of her last batches of speckle dye and I love it and I what I did was I um, faded them this color here I don't remember what the other colors are called this color this pinkish and green is called dirty pool toys <laughs> I couldn't resist and I got them at Ryan Beck 2018 but she doesn't dye these colors anymore so anyway all right so I have two more colors to show you I have a beautiful batch of witchy purple which is a mix actually of cool and warm purples. I took all my purples and layered them together in the pan. <laughs> they look beautiful. And and this is a brand new color. I was trying to think of a name for this. And I came up with, a, I think, a decent name. This is Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> Which is kind of a mix between Luxardo and Slutty Pumpkin. It's kind of a mashup. So, drawing upon the popular band Smashing Pumpkins. Here we go. This is Smashing Pumpkins and it's so pretty. I love it. It's got some white space in there which I think adds to it. It's pretty cool. Would make a beautiful pair of socks or a shawl. Gorgeous sweater. You don't know. No. So um, if for some reason I sell out of something you can let me know email me or message me on the rate directly on the website app and we can work something out and I can dye up some skeins for you. So yeah, so that's a pretty fall collection. I'll probably be dyeing a little bit more before I kick into holiday season. We shall see. Last but not least in shop update news, I have Dark 13. I'm not going to take them out of the package. I will put a picture in. You get a free pattern with these beautiful skeins. I have, I'm going to put a picture up here of the listing. Um, you get a beautiful bag that goes with it. I don't have the bag with me today. Donna's sewing them. Um, and yeah they're they're still available and the shawl is beautiful okay let's talk about what i have been knitting so my main project of what i've been knitting i picked up my land of sweets cowl that i started last year with a mini skein set that i did and i this is my second cowl that i've knit with a mini skein set of mine and um, I I absolutely love this cowl this is my fourth this is my fourth um, one of these Land of Sweets cowl by Helen Stewart and I'm very happy with how it's coming out look at this color that's popping this color. I love it. Got some dark colors leading up to this one. And the next one coming up will probably be this one, which is a little more muted. And then the last one will be this colorful one. So I love it. I want to finish it this week so I can wear it because I wear my cowls, these Land of Sweets cowls, I wear them all day, all the time. And the only reason I don't have one on now is because I have this sweater on. I wanted to show you how beautiful it is. Um, 
but that cowl, I, those cowls, I'm constantly wearing them. I just rewashed and blocked the two that I wear the most, and they smell so good, but I want more because <laughs> I love them. So that's been fun. Since I talked to you last, I started a new project, kind of new old. And this is Humulus by Isabel Kramer. And I knit this once before and ripped it out because it was huge and looked horrible on me. So I modified the neckline to make it a little smaller. I think it should be okay. It's still kind of big, but I think it'll be fine. It's not as tight. This one's really up here. This one's a little more loose, but I think it'll be fine. It better be, <laughs> so I'm not knitting this again. Um, so I am almost three quarters of the way finished with the color work. So pretty. And the reason I frogged this and knit it again was because I love the yarn so much. This yarn is from the Faroese Islands. It's the called for yarn and colors. And I ordered it from the Faroese Islands, and I'll be darned, I am not going to waste this beautiful yarn. So I frogged the sweater, washed the yarn. It's, so, it's not, it's soft. It's beautiful. I love it. It's so nice. So I want to get back to this one soon, too, because it's really fun to knit, and I want the sweater. It's not bothering my hands, which is good because um, I sent out a sweater to be knit from Lopi because Lopi was bothering my hands. Could have been because I wasn't feeling well, but I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. I'm going to have a Lopi sweater in the next couple months, and I'm really excited about it. So, socks. I am almost finished with my first campfire sock by Mustache. It's gorgeous. So my sock recipe is 2x2 two two rib for 15 rounds. I do about 66 rounds for the leg, plain rounds. Put in a fish lips kiss heel. I do about 68 rounds for the foot and I'm pretty much ready to start the toe on this sock. This is beautiful yarn. I love this color. These warm colors. I'm into them. Very into them. This sock I'm going to show you was what I knit when I was in Disney, and these are cool colors, and pretty much I didn't get too much done on this sock. I actually knit, well, I was in Disney, we left on a Monday, and we left, got home on a Saturday, so plain knitting, waiting in the rides knitting at night I we fell into bed and slept like I had we had no downtime at night <laughs> my son is 28 years old he wants to do stuff he wants to do rides so we were busy um but look at these beautiful cool colors this is I think this is the dark father by mustache it is a Anakin Skywalker reference and I love Star Wars so much, particularly Disney Star Wars. And we were in Galaxy's Edge and had the best time. It was so fun. The stormtroopers, we went into the bar that's there. I did not drink, I had a water, but he, my son did. He, he drank, he made up for me. And the stormtroopers came in and started you know, interrogating people. There's a lot of really cool street atmosphere. Chewie wanders around. The Mandalorian wanders around with Grogu, but we didn't see him. But maybe when I go with Richie, I'll see him. So, yep. So this is the Dark Father. I love it. I'm, I'm pretty much ready to start the heel. So that's really fun. I love, love it. Love this yarn. Very pretty. And, what else? Crochet. I'm obsessed with this blanket, and I wish I had more time to work on it, but I'm so focused on finishing that cowl 
that I haven't worked on it as much as I wanted to, but I put in a few more stripes. So this is my scrappy scrappy crochet blanket. And I am hold so I'm holding wool yarn with gray mohair. And it tones down the crazy colors, which is amazing. So I haven't finished frogging the original blanket. I'm going to because I'm using all of the, these scraps. So this was my original that I was making. I was making a baby blanket, but see how bright it is? And it's kind of like, eh. So when you hold it with the mohair, tones down so much. And I love it. I mean, it's it's got a lot going on, but I'm cool with it. So look at the difference. It smells good. This is mostly all of my hand dyed. And um, the pattern, I'll put the pattern down below. It's by Daisy Creations, Daisy Chain Cre I don't know. I'll put it down below. And I am just picking colors sort of at random. You know, I'll look at a color and go, oh, that looks nice with the color down below. So it doesn't matter because the mohair just evens everything out, which is really fun. So, since I'm going to Rhinebeck, I thought that I would take some time and talk about how I pick yarn for a sweater that I want to knit, um, and how I know how much yardage to get and what type of yarn to get um, as it relates to a pattern that I want to knit. So, I want to knit the Weekender Crew. And I have my laptop here and I'm doing a screen recording. So um, I'm gonna put that up here. So this is this is the Weekender crew. And it calls for a DK yarn. And I really want a light gray color, like over here, as you can see her, I'll click on it. She spun this yarn that's in this pattern. Um, I am not going to spin my yarn, but it's basically the same color as what I'm knitting Humulus out of, this beautiful color. So I want this color. It doesn't necessarily have to be a woolen spun yarn, but I kind of want it a little bit rustic, kind of like this. But this is, I actually almost knit this up into the Weekender Crew because it's, it could you could probably knit it as a DK, but the gauge is 21 stitches to the inch, and I think it would be just slightly tight with this yarn. Um, so I want to get a good, true DK. Um, so the first thing I do is I look at the size. So her sizes, she, she uses a number system, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and, and upwards. So that doesn't mean anything to me. I see why she does it, because, you know, gives her more options, gives her more sizes that she can do. So what I do is I scroll down, and then I find my finished, finished chest circumference that I want for the sweater. So the finished chest circumference coordinates with her number. So her lowest number is, is a one and that would be a 34. So let's look and I'm gonna decide how big I want this sweater. So she gives you some notes as to what she recommends. And underneath here it says, intended to be worn with approximately 12 to 8 inches um, of positive ease, 30.5 to 20.5 centimeters of positive ease. 
that's a lot. That's, that's a lot of ease. So she knit it in a size three, and she has 12 inches of positive ease. So, um, so one, two, three, she knit the 41.5 size. Um, so her gray one is quite large, so that would mean she has a 31 inch chest. Maybe she does. I mean, I don't know. Um, that doesn't seem right to me. Anyway, maybe she has a 32 inch chest. That could be. Um, okay, so my chest right now is about a 37, 38. So I'm going to go with 10 inches of positive ease because um, I don't like mine huge. Because I'm small. I'm just short and it looks. Anyway. So 12 to 8 inches. I'm going to go with 10 inches. So if I look at these finished chest circumferences, I would be knitting size 4, which is a 46 inch chest circumference, which would give me 10 inches. Now my hips are, are bigger than my bust. <laughs> So my hips are right now about 41. So 46 should give me lots of room all the way down. Okay, so I'm knitting one, two, three. I'm knitting a size four. So now let's look at the yarn. So she used a DK weight wool cotton blend. I am not. <laughs> I'm absolutely not knitting a wool cotton blend. No, I'm knitting 100% wool. Her sample that she's wearing, the light gray, she knit um, it in 100% CVM, which is California Variegated Mutant, I think, yarn that she spun herself. Um, so you can knit it out of 100% wool. So for a size four, I'm going to need 424 grams right here, which is about five skeins roughly. But let's look at the yardage. So I need one, two, three. I need about 1,400 yards, 1,399 yards of yarn, of DK yarn to be safe. So it's so to be safe, it's about five skeins. That would give you lots of extra. Um, if you if you got four skeins, I think you'd be a little short. So I need five skeins of a DK wool yarn that's going to give me about 21 stitches to um, four inches, um, which is a little tighter than five stitches to the inch. So. So yeah, so that's that's how I am going to decide. I'm probably going to get about five skeins um, of yarn. Now she gives you notes on suggested yarn. She said I wanted a warm weather friendly yarn for this newest version of the Weekender. I love a wool cotton blend yarn. I do not, as it gives the lightest of the cotton, easier on my hands thanks to the elasticity of the wool. Um, if I'm going to knit, I'm going to knit with wool, to be honest. I mean, cotton's fine. I just don't want to knit with it, even if it's a blend. Uh, so she used Dapple, a two-ply. That gives me good information. She, so her cotton wool blend is a two-ply yarn. And it's an airy woolen spun, spun yarn dyed up into a beautiful array of weathered tonal colorways. So her hand spun is a three ply 100% CBM wool yarn that's bouncy and warm and perfect for the cooler temperatures in Maine. Um, so yeah, I, I, mean, I don't think I have to worry about whether it's worsted or woolen spun. Um, I just want something a little more rustic than what, I'm, what I dye. I do have DK yarn. But it's a little smoother than what I really want for this sweater. Because what I want, I want this one. <laughs> I want the gray one. I'm not putting pockets on it, though.
because in my experience, pockets and wool, no. If I'm going to put something in, it's cute, but if I'm going to put something in that pocket, it's going to, it, it, no matter how tight you knit that pocket, it's going to sag. And no, I just, so it's going to be po pocketless. The only reason I'm not knitting the other weekender with the boat neck is because it's a boat neck. <laughs> That's why I haven't knit it yet. I'm not into the boat neck thing. But I do like a good crew. I pretty much knit everything in a crew neck. So that's why I chose this sweater. So that is my method of figuring out how much I need. I mean, you just basically have to do a little, little tiny bit of math. I know that most yarn comes in 100 gram skeins. Sometimes they come in 150, 120. Anyway, you have to look at the label basically of your yarn. I sell in 100 grams. I've seen it as high, 116 I think is, is um, a full four ounce skein. So a 100 gram skein is 3.5 ounces. So, um, it does help that she tells you um, how much, how many grams would require the, the uh, four, size four, 424 for me, which if it, each, most skeins come in 100 grams, so four skeins wouldn't be enough, you need an extra. If it's a four ounce skein, like 116 grams of yarn, you could get away with. You could definitely get away with four skeins. So you just got to read your labels. That's all. Um, I always buy a little extra, though. Because, especially if you're a place like Rhinebeck and you can't get the yarn anymore. And, you know, your vendor is in the wilds of Maine and doesn't have a website or something, which has happened to me. Um, you're better off getting an extra skein. So, I will let you know what I pick up for this beautiful sweater. Let me know if you're going to any fiber festivals near you or if you're going to be at Rhinebeck in the comments down below. And maybe we'll have a chat. So that's it for today, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. So I'm going to try to be more present on Instagram. I'm trying. You know, basically, I just forget that Instagram is there. I, know I don't post as much as I would like. I'm going to try and rem remedy that. But I'm going to try after lunchtime, possibly on a Tuesday or a Thursday, to do some Instagram lives. So I, um, I join Sue from Legacy Fiber Arts pretty much every week in her lives, and they're so fun. And I like to kind of try to do that. Um, she does hers in the morning. You don't want to see me in the morning. <laughs> So I thought after lunch would be a fun time for a few minutes and I'll show you what I've been working on and we'll talk yarn and yeah, try and join me for that. So my first one will be either October 17th or October 19th, somewhere around quarter to one, one-ish. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> if I don't pop up, you know it just went horribly wrong. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good week. Knit something beautiful. And cheers! <laughs>